Welcome back. New York's back to school battle heating up today as frustrated parents head to the state capitol for a rally. Those parents demanding the state follow CDC guidance and update social distancing rules and other requirements. Joining me live, founder of Bring Kids Back New York, Kristen Dyroff and parents Eric Hartman and Sierra Arazari. You're all parents. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Kristen, Thanks. I'll start with you. Um, why did you decide to join this? What has been your biggest struggle so far? And do you feel like your message hasn't been heard? Absolutely. So I'm a frontline healthcare worker. I've been on the front lines of this pandemic since March. Um, and I formed this group, or I was one of the founding members of Bring Kids Back New York, um, when I realized in September that my district wasn't going to be opening up at all and our kids were going to remain virtual. Um, we had about a week's notice to scramble and find, you know, what we were going to do for our children. Um, and my husband and I both work outside the home, we're essential, and it was very difficult for us to do our jobs properly and also make sure our children were being educated properly. We didn't think the virtual learning was working well for our young children. Hmm. So I formed this group and we were trying to advocate to get New York to open our schools. Eric, I know that you and your wife both work full time. I know that you have two young boys and you've had issues with things that they've been exposed to on these school issued um, laptops or computers that they've been able to use while virtual learning. Um, can you talk about the issues you've had and why you think it's so important for schools to now get back into session and follow some of these updated guidelines, specifically the three feet versus six? That's a huge difference because that means you can have more kids then in the classrooms. Yeah, um, our kids seven and nine uh, were issued school Chromebooks and um, they have been able to do everything from play video games to avoid classes just like the other kids and um, our kids and other kids have been exposed to hardcore porn on these computers and the school, um, they're really not set up to do this kind of IT and yet they seem to be uh, digging into this virtual learning because even though our district technically is scheduled to go back to full-time in person in late April, um, they're still insisting on doing this virtual learning on these laptops. They actually think that books, pencils, and pens um, are virus carriers. And you know, to your point about the guidance, uh, what we keep seeing is they take this guidance and then they double and triple it just to be safe. Um, they have kind of this uh, better safe than sorry planning policy, which makes zero sense. Wow. Um Sierra, you're a mother of two. Um, I I'm sure that you've probably had, you know, similar circumstances to what they're describing. But I also know that you noticed differences in, in how your children have been behaving since they've been out of school for so long, right? Yeah, so I, this was my first introduction into public school. My son is in kindergarten and he was so excited as most kindergartners usually are to get on the bus and just be with his friends and go to school. And this year has been anything but that. My normally, you know, sweet child was just defiant, not himself. And basically he was watching himself all day because I'm working. You know, thankfully I am one of the lucky parents who got to work from home and I don't have to try to figure out who's going to stay with my son while this virtual is happening, but I've had to supplement his education and send him into a pod, which I was luckily, luckily enough to find um, in February. So it's just been night and day seeing him thrive now, having this additional two days in school versus him just being not himself. Wow, that's devastating. And I know that so many parents are having that same issue with, with noticing changes in their kids, with their behavior, with their mental state, with everything. Um, Kristen, how many people have joined this group and are you satisfied with any responses you have gotten, if you've gotten any? Uh, so Bring Kids Back New York was only started probably weeks ago. We have about 350 people in our Facebook group, which is considered small. However, that group itself has allowed us to branch out and meet leaders from groups all over the state of New York. Um, we do have Zoom calls every week, multiple times a week, talking about our plan and trying to get our groups to be cohesive um, and moving forward. Also sharing information, which is useful because it's, it's surprising how little information there is out there and you don't 
realize what your neighboring districts are doing. And it's shocking how different the districts are, are operating from one to the next. Um, but reaching out to parents, we have a ton of support. Um, I get messages every day from parents thanking us for our advocacy. Uh, we write letters. We're calling all our, our county and legislatures, our, our, our senators, um, and even our, we're attending all our board of education meetings. Um, many of us were not as involved before, um, but going through this, we realized that uh, we need to be uh, more involved. I'll also be running for my school board uh, going forward, um, and we are encouraging all other members of our group and the other groups within the state of New York to get more involved in our school board so we have more decision making for our children and our tax dollars. Absolutely. And Eric and Sierra, we have about 10 seconds for each of you to give a final word. Eric, I'll start with you. Uh, she's absolutely right. The heroes our kids need are right here. Parents need to step up and not and stop outsourcing this stuff to other people who are frankly not doing their jobs. Yes, yeah, Sierra, you're the voice for your kids. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah, I'm one of the collective. You know, I'm the one here speaking with you today, but there are many, many, many parents across the state who are being given different guidances at the local and state level. And we need somebody who is going to join this fight with us and say the science says it's safe to get these kids back in school. Private school in New York has been functioning since September. Other states have opened since September. We have to do what's right for these kids. And we're not looking to take you know, it's either remote or full in-person learning. Yeah. Okay, Kristen, Eric, and Sierra, thank you for joining us and sharing your stories and keep us updated on everything. We appreciate it. Carly. Thank you. Thank you.